Welcome to the Discovering Emacs podcast. This is episode number five. And in today's episode, I'll be sharing some default movement and editing shortcuts. I'll only be covering some of the essentials, but I'm sure there's something new for both beginners and experienced Emacs users. At the end, I'll share some key binding recommendations to make the editing experience in Emacs slightly better. Movement shortcuts. There's obviously the basic character and word movement shortcuts that I'm sure most of you already know, but for those new to Emacs, you can use Ctrl and F to move one character forward, Ctrl and B to move one character backward, and to move by word, you can use Meta F and Meta B. There's also the basic Ctrl A and Ctrl E to move to the beginning and end of a line, and finally there's Ctrl P and Ctrl N to move up and down lines. With the basics out of the way, let's now cover some more interesting bindings. Meta M moves the cursor to the true beginning of a line. In other words, it moves the cursor to the indentation or to the first character, ignoring the white space. Meta left angle bracket and meta right angle bracket jumps to the beginning and end of the buffer. Keep in mind that a mark is set before the jump takes place. Control V and Meta V moves the cursor up a page or down a page, useful for fast vertical movement and file scanning. Meta G Meta G moves the cursor to a specified line number. You can also prefix this command to avoid the mini buffer prompt. We'll cover prefixing commands later. Control L will cycle the cursor line between the center, top, and bottom of the current window's viewport. And Meta R will cycle the cursor position between the center top and bottom of the current windows viewport. Taking advantage of the S expression shortcuts. Aside from the aforementioned movement shortcuts, I find myself making heavy use of Emacs's S expression shortcuts. These are intended for Lisp-like programming languages, but in Emacs they actually work for almost all languages. If you're unfamiliar with Emacs's S expression shortcuts and how to use them, let me give you an example use case. Imagine you open up a C source file that defines a series of functions. We can make use of S expression shortcuts, Control Meta P and Control Meta N, to vertically move the cursor between each function, as long as the cursor is in the file's root level. If the cursor was somewhere inside a function, we can move the cursor to an outer block using Control Meta U, think of it as up, and we can do the opposite by moving the cursor into deeper blocks using Control Meta D. Think of it as down. Emacs provides a series of S expression shortcuts for editing and movement commands. Be sure to give them a try and you might also find them invaluable. Making use of prefixes. Before we move on to the editing shortcuts, it's useful to know about Emacs's ability to prefix existing shortcuts with positive and negative counts. To demonstrate this, we'll look at the kill word shortcut, meta D. By default, this binding deletes a word to the right of the cursor. If we prefix this command by first pressing meta hyphen and then meta D, it will perform the operation in the opposite direction and delete the first word to the left of the cursor. This type of prefix is basically a negative count and it's officially referred to as a negative argument. Many of Emacs's default shortcuts can be prefixed with such negative arguments by either using meta hyphen or control hyphen. We can also prefix shortcuts with positive counts that causes the operation to be performed multiple times. For example, if we wanted to delete five words to the right of the cursor, we would press meta five followed by meta D. Such positive counts can also be negated so if we wanted to delete five words to the left, we could press meta hyphen, meta five, and meta D. One important thing to notice here is that we can either use control or meta for prefix operations. This provides you with a little bit more flexibility and convenience when making use of prefix shortcuts. Emacs has a few more prefix shortcuts, but these seems to be the ones I find myself using the most. To recap, Meta and control followed by a number prefixes a command with a count. This count can also be negated using either meta hyphen or control hyphen. 
meta hyphen and control hyphen prefixes a command with a negative argument of negative one. Editing shortcuts. To keep things interesting, I'm only going to share the editing related shortcuts that I myself use on a regular basis. Also keep in mind that most of the following shortcuts do also accept prefixes. The basics, Ctrl D and Meta D, deletes a character or word forward. Ctrl K kills everything to the right of the cursor on the current line. Ctrl Meta K kills the S expression in front of the cursor. It can be used to kill entire code blocks. Ctrl Backspace deletes a word to the left of the cursor. Meta I inserts horizontal white space. Meta backslash deletes horizontal white space. Meta circumflex joins the current line with the previous line. And when used with a negation prefix, it will join the following line with the current line. Meta space ensures that there's only one space between characters. Meta C, Meta U and Meta L can be used to capitalize uppercase or lowercase a word. Control X and Control O removes all extra blank lines above and below the cursor. Control X and Control semicolon comments out the current line. Meta semicolon can be used to comment out the regions. Control X Z repeats the last complex command. A complex command is one that used the mini buffer. Control X I inserts a file's contents into the current buffer at the cursor point. Control X open paren, Control X closing paren, and Control X E can be used to quickly record, end, and play a macro. Control X and H highlights the entire buffer. Control meta and backslash re-indents the current region. It can also be used directly after yanking some source code into the buffer. Meta Z, called zap to char, kills everything forward up to and including the given character. I'll also be sharing a solution uh, that's a little bit better later. Meta Q fills the paragraph. Control XRT, when rectangle selection mode is active, this shortcut replaces the contents of the rectangular selection with the provided string on each line. Shortcut recommendations. Before I share this recommendation, we should be aware of the following user key binding rule. Sequences consisting of control C and a letter, either uppercase or lowercase, are reserved for users. Although I personally follow this rule for most of my key bindings, the following recommendations chooses to ignore this rule for efficiency reasons, but feel free to rebind them as you would like. Over time, I found the default safe buffer shortcut of Ctrl X and Ctrl S to be a little bit cumbersome, so I rebound this action to Ctrl Return. When navigating between two or more splits, Ctrl X and O requires you to cycle through in one direction. You can, however, use a negative prefix, but I found that binding Ctrl and uppercase O to travel in the opposite direction more convenient. To add a new line in Emacs without breaking the current line into two, one must first move the cursor to the end using Ctrl E before pressing the return key. I found combining these two actions using the shortcut meta return to be of much use. The last recommendation is to make use of zap up to char, which I find much more useful than zap to char. One additional optimization is to abstract away the mini buffer prompt by using an interactive function. I choose to remap Ctrl and Z for this purpose, and with this modification I can now press Ctrl Z followed by any character, making Emacs kill everything up to but not including the character. Conclusion. Emacs has a great set of default editing and movement shortcuts that once mastered can make you very productive. And to some degree, I think it's a shame that so many new users start off using Emacs with Vim emulation. Of course, everyone is different and what works for some might not work for others. But I would encourage new Emacs users to give the default key bindings a decent chance. 
Who knows, you might find yourself in appreciation of the synergy they create across such a vast amount of different major modes. And as always, you can find a link to the episode's detailed show notes in the description of this episode. And if you have some suggestions, corrections or need help, please feel free to open up a new discussion in the discussions section of this podcast's repository. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for the next episode of Discovering Emacs.